Hello and welcome to another Sonic State review. My name's Tosh from Widge Productions and today I'm going to be taking a look at the Atomic Transient plugin from Molecular Bytes. Okay, Atomic Transient, the clues in the name really. This is a transient processor, um, another one, because the last review I did was looking at the Sonox Oxford Evolution, which was a transient processor. Um, as with all these reviews, this this product brings something new to the game. So uh, as a quick recap, the mother of all these is Transient Designer, and that allows you to attenuate or accentuate the attack and sustain of um, the incoming audio. So you can beef up the attacks of snares, for example, reduce the sustain on, on piano notes, all kinds of things. Um, the Oxford Evolution plugin that I looked at last time took that a stage further. Uh, it allowed you to do some frequency dependent um, manipulation and gave you finer control over the envelope of the, the sound. So it's kind of like Transient Designer on steroids. Um, Atomic Transient, I'd say, is like Transient Designer on, in the Russian Olympic team by that analogy because uh, it gives you a huge degree of control based off of detection of transients and subsequent processing. So it's effectively a multi-band transient processor, but it also has some aces up its sleeve, including polyphonic operation, as well as um, triggered filters. So without waffling on too much, uh, what I thought I'd do is just run up a loop and bounce through some of the, the factory presets just to, so you can hear some of the things it does. Uh, so let's kick off this over here my anodyne house loop for you let's look at the preset menu so bulged cut enhanced punching early sustain Now, I'm actually abusing it a little bit because some of these presets weren't designed for four mixes, but I just, like I say, wanted to show you some of the interesting possibilities this plugin offers. Do a couple more, but you're getting the idea here that there's um, all manner of things going on here. Just a quick reminder of what the original loop sounded like. So, um, what you have there is a very, very versatile plugin that's doing a lot more than just you know basic transient processing. You could probably hear there's gating. There's um, enhancing, there's auto filtering, there's multi-band um, compression or uh, sustain enhancement, things like that. There's a lot of different um, processing functions coming out of one plugin. So uh, let's try and figure out exactly what's going on here. Now, I suppose before I go any further, I should say this is one of those plugins that out of the box, it's not obvious how it works. There are some which just have a few knobs, you fire it up, you twist a few and think, ah, okay, that's what, that's what it's supposed to do. This one, I have to admit, took me a while to get to grips with, and I still can't say that I'm a complete, um, I have complete mastery of it, but it took a few reads of the manuals and a bit of head scratching and playing around with it, and I eventually figured out kind of how, how it works, I think, and I'm gonna share that with you now. So, Let's kick off by using a drum loop and feeding that into the system. So here's our instance of the plugin. Um, immediately, one nice feature is you've got a resizable interface, which is a nice touch. Now you've got this um, little workflow here where you've got an input frequency spectrum across here. You've got a waterfall plot of the processed audio. So this is showing you 
spectral history, if you like. And these lines that are appearing are the detected transient events. And then down here, you've got the fine detail controls over the processing. So you've got multiband, you've got three channels here, which I mean, you've effectively got three of these processors running in parallel. Um, this panel here controls the trigger, so the detection mechanism, um, working out, deciding what's a transient event. Then this little panel here controls how the process sound is combined with the original sound. And then over here, we've got an effect section, which is actually the, the processing. So you've got an envelope um, modifier, if you like. And you've also got a filter, which is triggered by the transient detection, and that is a dynamic filter. Okay, so let's fire up that loop. So here you can see the spectra of our incoming audio, and I can immediately start to focus the processing in on a particular frequency range. So if I just want to work on the kick, for example, I can set the input range there. I can either do it by pulling those bars or down here with that. Now, let's just to illustrate what's going on, let's kick up the envelope. So I want to increase the attack on my detected transient events. There, you can hear that quite clearly. Or I want to remove it, soften it. Let's keep going with that theme. Now, at the moment, I'm operating on the entire frequency band. If I just wanted to work on the kick, for example, I can focus it in like that. And that's manipulating this control down here, does the same thing. I can also have it so that the trigger operates only on the frequency band that the, sorry, the mix operates only on the frequency band that the trigger is working on. So as I change the trigger frequency, so the effect frequency changes. So let's give that down there. Now what I can do is if I wanted to use the ah, okay. that kick triggering to manipulate other frequencies, this is how I do it. So I'm now using the kick to process hi-hats, ducking them out in this case, or making them poke through. Now it's really worth mentioning this whole envelope section over here. It has some interesting features. So let's go back to full band. So you've got a display here of your envelope. Now. I turn down the attack you'll see the blue is the kind of output envelope whereas the gray is the original envelope so we can see the effect of our reduced attack and then say I want to increase the decay bring the sustain down you can see what you're doing very readily on that envelope display now you've also got the option to work in an absolute manner. So currently we're working relatively to the original envelope. So for example, it's increasing it above what's already there. Now, if I put it onto fixed shape, this allows me to define the envelope of my choice. So for instance, I want something that looks a bit like that. this interacts with this silence control here. So threshold is determining when the transient event is detected and silence determines when that transient event is over and triggers the release. Let's stop that loop for a moment. Let's just um, play around with something else. Okay, so there's a few other controls in here that's worth mentioning. Now, if I again focus the processing 
on these upper harmonics, for example. You can blend the original signal, residual, with the process signal. That's the process signal. That's the unprocessed signal. That's the combination of the two. Now, if you notice on the spectrogram, you've got stuff in grey and stuff in blue. So the greyed out stuff is the bits that aren't being processed, that are unaffected by the, the transient processing. Now we can also use this transient detection to trigger filters. So they've given two filters here, a low and a high, and you set their frequencies here. And you can make them dynamic with this drift parameter, which allows them to drift up and down based on their triggering. And you can control the speed of that. Now another interesting and pretty unique feature is this polyphony control. Um, and in order to demonstrate this, let me just pull up a piano loop. And let's just set everything back to default. So, as you'd expect, the plugins work in here, picking out each note and deciding that it's a transient event. So if I start doing some processing on it, for example, I'm going to take the sustain, the attack off it. What you notice there is the attack is being pulled from the entire sound, so sus sustaining piano notes from a previous chord are being ducked down as well. So it sounds a bit odd. What this polyphony mode allows you to do is get around that. It's What it's doing is it's analysing the audio, the spectrum of each transient event and working out whether the subsequent audio belongs to that transient event. And if it thinks it does, it won't apply the processing to that part of the spectrum. And you can hear that quite clearly when I switch in and out. So this is very interesting because it means you can work with polyphonic material in ways that, you know, I hadn't realised were possible before. So increasing sustain. And you've got this character knob, which allows you to control how that processing sounds, because depending on what you push through it, sometimes it can sound slightly unnatural. And this allows you a degree of control over that. Now you can also put drum loops through this and what that allow you to do is to pick out um, individual hits without affecting the, the overall sound. So if we go back to the percussion loop. So we're in polyphonic mode. Let's just see if we can work on the kick. Set the threshold down. Now I'm going to soften the kick. You can see I'm doing that without really affecting the other sounds. And then if I kick on another channel, so we have a second band on, you'll see now we get same set of controls appearing in the window but in a different colour. Let's see if we can work on the high frequencies. And you can hear there there is some artefacts and the amount varies with the character control. So you can see this is very interesting because it means you can do some very detailed manipulation of, of um, already mixed material. 
So clearly this is going to appeal to anyone who works with loops a lot because um, the ability to pull apart premix material um, is clearly a bonus and also remixes. Anything that allows you to just take um, complex sounds and pull them apart, uh, it opens up a whole load of possibilities. Um, and I think it's a, a very interesting and unique offering as far as I'm aware uh, to the whole plug-in game. So overall verdict, well, firstly I'll say, I think I mentioned earlier, it's complex. It took me a while to get uh, my head around it. And I think this might might deter some people, especially if you like to just, you know, get working quickly and you don't have the time to fiddle around with it. But it may also be that I just didn't get it. I don't think so. I, you know, I know reasonably what I'm doing. Um, it's it's a complex interface, you know. There's a lot of controls here. And then I know in plugin development, it's tempting to throw a lot of things onto that interface, give maximum flexibility. But sometimes that can be a bit overwhelming. Um, and I didn't, haven't described every single feature uh, on here uh, for reasons of brevity. I've kind of covered the main things. But there's there's still yet more to be uncovered there. Um, but overall, I think this is a really interesting plugin. I didn't get it at first, I'll admit, but now, now that I do, I think, wow, that you can do some crazy stuff with this and anything that's going to open up, um, new ways of doing things and, you know, create inspiring new sounds. I think it's definitely a good thing. Um, now this is available uh, from Molecular Bytes from their website. It's currently retailing at €129. Euros. Um, but I think if you are watching this review before the 31st of July, there's a 20% off offer, which finishes then. So you might want to get over there, check out the demo and decide if it's something that's for you. Okay. And that brings us to the end of uh, this little review. I hope you've enjoyed it and found it interesting. And as ever, I will catch you on the next review. Thanks for listening.